There is one simple reason why you will barely find any photos of Cecilia or any members of her group once they became friends with Cecilia. And that is because the occult will then steal those photos or videos and perform some kind of magic on those videos and photos to then torture and kill Cecilia and any member of her group. This is the primary reason we were told never to take any photos or videos. And if we ever accidentally slipped up and tried or attempted to take a photo, we were basically harshly reprimanded. Um, I recall in the beginning when I first met Cecilia, I was completely unaware of this supposed rule and supposed fact. Um, that you just were not allowed to take any photos or videos of Cecilia for her safety from the occult. And um, I'll never forget the first time I attempted to, uh, to take a photo. Rhea freaked out at me, uh, reprimanded me, and that's when I found out this rule, this bizarre reasoning that Cecilia had. Because the occult was on the lookout for any kind of evidence or any kind of uh, thing basically that they could use in order to link to Cecilia in order to torture her and kill her. It didn't matter by which means. Um, there were various various uh, ways in which the occult would apparently do this to Cecilia. Uh, I mean in torturing her or trying to kill her. And photographs and videos was one of the supposed tactics. I mean, I still remember uh, the odd occasion when Cecilia and I would stand on her veranda. And she would look at the cameras across from the hospital. I honestly didn't even know there were cameras uh, until Cecilia pointed it out. Because she kept staring at something across from where she was staying. And uh, she just simply said to me, oh no, her dad's busy watching her through the cameras that are in the, from the hospital. By that point, basically nothing surprised me. I mean, <laughs> this was nothing in comparison to what was going on with Cecilia. I mean, talking about werewolves, vampires, astral projection, you name it, uh, a security video camera and being watched is basically nothing in comparison to the rest. So I really didn't think much of this. And um, I did ask her, I did ask Cecilia on the odd occasion, you know, since we weren't allowed to take any videos or photos of her, why does she then still stand on her veranda? Because technically the hospital security cameras are busy videoing her. And... Sometimes she honestly wouldn't even have an answer for me. She would just look at me and she would walk inside. And then other times she would say to me, there was basically two reasons. She would either say to me, I oh know she, she's got her connection, uh, connections and the footage will be erased. Or the, the reason, which honestly didn't, doesn't make sense. Um, because she's doing absolutely nothing on the veranda that the occult could use. Um, basically, she's just standing there, not saying anything, not doing anything in particular. Then the occult could not use the footage. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that that uh, reasoning does not uh, weigh up or match having taken a photograph because technically it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it doesn't make sense. But now looking back, obviously there was another reason for no photos and no videos. Evidence. And I know when the investigation carried on through those four years, the investigators battled to get any evidence of Cecilia and her group. I mean, they had managed to find evidence of the things that they had found, like the weapons that Cecilia and her group had hidden, um, the crimes that they had committed, uh, things that were stored in Cecilia's flat, but no actual photographs of uh, just general comings and goings or uh, anything in specific, should I say. 
anything that would either be a seemingly nothing event or a seemingly important event. There was absolutely nothing to be found. The only photos that came out with Cecilia were photos once she had been put into custody and then the photos that also had gone through the media were actually photos I had taken of Cecilia I think it was within the first month of knowing her. It was the photos of her and Rhea at Coronation Dam. Now, at that point when I had taken those photos of Cecilia and Rhea at Coronation Dam, Rhea didn't even know that I had taken the photos because she was preoccupied with Cecilia uh, switching to Cecilia's DID part, Anya. So Rhea was completely unaware of me taking any photos. And... In all honesty, I don't even know how the investigators got a hold of these photos because I had deleted them long ago along with a whole lot of information that I had um, after I had left Cecilia. Actually, it was an accidental deletion. Del yeah, I don't even know if I said that right. But uh, basically, I accidentally knocked over my external hard drive and there went absolutely everything. So... I, I mean, I had a lot of information. I had entire backups of Cecilia's entire computer. And uh, honestly, there are so many times where I would still love to go through those files to see what was in them. Because I had, I, I was never allowed to. And now, of course, all these years afterwards, you know, curiosity peaks and you wonder what exactly was in there. You know, was it absolutely nothing important? Um, that Cecilia was basically testing me with, you know, saying that here's some of, well, not some, here's all of the information off of my computer, I'm trusting you with it, and then she's busy thinking, let's see, you know, how well you basically obey me. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I hadn't gone through her files, and... I honestly, honestly do wish I still had them so I could go through them because what if there was something important in there? But of course there's also a side part of me saying there more than likely wasn't because why would Cecilia entrust me with information that, you know, could be used as evidence against her in the event that for some reason I eventually do leave the group? But either way, there's still the curiosity there. And as for the photos of Cecilia and Rhea at Coronation Dam, I don't know how the investigators got them, but I'm glad they do, because there was at least something uh, from the past, from the time that I had known Cecilia. There were uh, several other photographs, but those were also lost. And then there was also a video camera. Now, it was actually my video camera that Cecilia had asked to borrow. And I never knew why. Um, she just said she wanted to, you know, have fun just recording random things. And I wasn't using it. And she was my best friend. So I saw no harm in it. But somehow during um, the time when the investigators were trying to find evidence, they somehow managed to recover a recording that I, I honestly don't know who had used the video camera. But... It was a recording of one of the uh, cold high days where Cecilia, as per usual, falls down on the floor looking like she's having an epileptic fit with blood pouring out of her mouth. Um, and then technically uh, this is what it would generally look like when the occult is busy sending attacks her way to try and kill her. I'll go into that in another audio, but... Somehow someone had actually recorded this. I don't know who, because in the video footage I saw Rhea and another member of her group, uh, a member that isn't mentioned in the media, and nor do I think she's guilty of anything. And then I think I also recall seeing Miranda in the video footage. And I must say, when, when the advocate asked me to watch the video, to then explain to him what exactly is going on? 
I mean, I can only imagine what was going through his mind because this looked absolutely bizarre. It looked like something from a horror movie. Uh, you couldn't make heads or tails of what on earth was going on. You had several people running around Cecilia praying while she's on the floor convulsing or looking like she's convulsing. Uh, there was no end result in the video to show if she survived, but obviously, I mean, she did because she's in jail. But you you had no clue as to what was going on in the video. It was a very short recording. And seeing this video, there were two things that went through me. One was a, a nasty flashback to the past. It wasn't just um, a moment of recalling a memory or an event it felt like I was actually still there it was actually it was it was the weirdest feeling I felt like I was actually still in the room yet again watching this scenario for I don't know how many times I had actually been through a scenario like this with Cecilia um, I actually felt like I was right there I didn't feel like I was in the advocate's office watching this on a computer screen, I felt like I was in the room, and my stomach turned, um, I felt sick to the core, I wanted to run, I, I can't explain the feeling, and then there was another part of me that just thought, ugh, not this nonsense again, and I think that part of me basically spoke up because I know it's nonsense now, and this was just a, a non-stop, tiring re repeat of what would go on almost daily with Cecilia. I mean, it was honestly ridiculous. So to see this again, to feel like I was actually there in the room, and to know that this was all nonsense, this was all a lie, it was utterly exhausting just to see it again. And... Explaining it to the advocate was very simple, although I must admit the look on his face was, well, priceless to say the least, because I'm sure he was thinking, you know, are you kidding me? Like, are you being serious? This is actually what's going on. This is ridiculous. But it's easy to say that once you know the truth. Back when all of this was actually going on, back when everyone that believed all of this it was reality, and like I said in previous audios, I couldn't count more than a handful of people that had met Cecilia that did not believe this. It was just that foolproof, it was that convincing. Um, <laughs> it's It was masterful. So, yes, I mean, looking back now, once you know that this is nonsense, of course, even I'll say this, this is bizarre, this is ridiculous, this is, this looks like it's from a movie. And yes, I, I can't believe um, that I was part of all of this, that this was a portion of my life, a huge portion of my life. Um, it's, I still shake my head. It's, it's utterly ridiculous. But yet, back then, that was reality. But going back to the topic at hand, that is, this is the reason why you will basically never find a photograph of Cecilia. Obviously, there will more than likely be photographs of when she was younger, where her parents or past friends had photographs of her. But once Cecilia had starting, started putting this group together and everything else, uh, there was basically not a photo to be found. Um, and like I said, if you even tried, you were reprimanded. I mean, I know, I, I must admit, I think there was at least one occasion where I wanted to sneak a photo of something. But for fear of being reprimanded, because you were reprimanded very harshly. Not, well, Rhea to a degree, um, but mostly Cecilia. Rhea reprimanded out of concern and fear. Cecilia was a whole different story. Um... That was pure basic fear, um, you, fear on your own behalf, basically, because if you do this, well, you're in trouble, not her. And with regards to photos and videos, 
we were allowed to take photos and videos of other things. Um, I don't know if I had mentioned in any of my audios yet where Cecilia and I had snuck into the Freemasonry temple that had been that used to be in Krugersdorp. Uh, I had photos of the inside. Um, that was actually an, an, an event that I'll never forget. But as for photos of Cecilia herself, uh, photos of Rhea, of anyone in the group, it was just not allowed. Unless you obviously took the photos of yourself, by yourself. Then that was a different story. Um, I know for social media, I was questioned at one point, fairly early into knowing Cecilia, and also told that I shouldn't post any photographs of myself, and I should take every photo of myself off the internet, because once again, the occult is going to find those photos, and then they are going to try and attack me. And even a step further than that, which is also ridiculous, is that in attacking me or Rhea or Marinda or anyone else in the group, the occult then apparently and supposedly was able to somehow connect the dots and link one of us to Cecilia through an invisible cord of some sort and then attack Cecilia. So it's basically like a spider web of of motion here. Yeah. If you can get to one, then you can find the other. So if the occult couldn't find anything of Cecilia, they would then try and find something of us. <laughs> Even talking about this now, I I'm still I'm shaking my head as I record this. Um, I don't know what to say. It is it is. I can only imagine how it must how it must sound to everyone, but it is ridiculous. Um, it this nonsense that we were fooled into and a part of me even wants to say you know why of all people does Cecilia think that the occult would be after her I mean yeah but um, then again she had this in inverted commas fantastic uh, foretelling of her birth a prophecy, apparently, um, for what she was supposed to do when she reached a certain age, and who she was supposed to be, and what she was able supposed to be able to do. Uh, that is one very long audio, or a couple of audios that I will uh, get to eventually. Uh, it's a very very long topic, but I know I need to cover it soon because. I should actually start at the beginning of what we were all told. And yes, it is <laughs> more than a movie bazaar. Um, Steven Spielberg and Stephen King could not have come up with this combined. But this was the reality of the nonsense, of the lies. And sadly, there was even, there was even ridiculous evidence that was given to all of us to back up all these claims. And at least once I had left Cecilia, I, I managed to find the sources for the evidence that we were given. Uh, like in my previous audios, where I had spoken about Marinda's John. Marinda's John was just a male um, model from the internet. And... This was similar to a fair amount of Cecilia's claims. It was just photos and evidence from other sources uh, adjusted to meet Cecilia's needs. And then there was other types of evidence, but I'll get to that eventually because I've gone off topic now. But I know there's a lot of people that are trying to find photos of even various members of Cecilia's group. And I know Rhea is one of the people that a lot of people are trying to find. Um, you will not find any photos of Rhea. I do have one, but I will never post it publicly um, for Rhea's safety and for Rhea's own privacy. As for the rest of the members, 
that were part of Cecilia's group that were not sentenced, you will not find them online. You will not find them anywhere. I know I've even searched and I know them all by name. I know who, what they, they look like, where they worked. Uh, you won't find it. You won't find any photos. And it was primarily for the reason of an occult tech, which, like I had also said, spiderweb links to Cecilia then, to then attack and kill her. And also then, adding to that, obviously the people that knew Cecilia, uh, that were part of a group, uh, people that also ran into hiding because of Cecilia, uh, everyone basically disappeared offline, if you would like to put it that way, so that they could not be found by Cecilia and the, P uh, the one sentenced. And also, they just do not want to be associated with all of this nonsense. And I can fully understand that. And I completely respect that. So for anyone who's trying to figure out or find out who looks like what and so on, you won't find anything. Unfortunately, uh, as far as I know, there isn't a device I could plug into my brain and print out photos and images of Cecilia and the events. But if I could, I would, at least for that. But there isn't anything. So all we can basically go by is the stories that are being told. And um, I guess then the rest is also up to your imagination. Because you weren't there to watch everything and to witness everything but I can also say this you can stretch your imagination as much and as far as you want to definitely go for it um, you still won't get close unfortunately you can imagine the most bizarre thing and the most extreme thing and you still won't <laughs> you won't get there you won't get to uh, get to the reality of the things that had happened